Well, I'm going to take a break from chronological order and briefly talk about something more recent. I happen to be going to another ghost town, also known as MOUT Towns. This one was much smaller and not that far from the base. There were maybe eight buildings in total, and they varied from single story to three story buildings. We spent all day hiking to this town. It was just about late afternoon when we finally sat our packs down in the buildings. The bone chilling wind decided to pick up and the temperatures hovered around freezing as the sun slowly disappeared. We spent the next five hours practicing various skills in an urban environment. Clearing rooms, detainee handling, throwing frag grenades, and so on. It got old pretty fast, considering I've been doing this for years now. Around 10pm, we were given the go-ahead to go indoors, away from the wind and get some damn sleep in our warm sleeping bags. I took the first watch, because I like to get a good block of sleep in. After an hour, I woke up the next guy, and I went to sleep. I was asleep for maybe 30 minutes before I was woken up with a nudge. I groggily emerged from my bag, and noticed it was one of the newer guys who I'd just woken up for watch. He'd only been here for maybe a month or two. My first words, understandably, were, Gee, what the fuck do you want? Well, um, uh, yeah, spit it out. For the last ten minutes, I kept seeing these two yellow dots across the street, in the window. Okay. I was staring at them for a while, and I heard what sounded like you call me over, except that well, you were in your sleeping bag. Absolutely pissed beyond belief. I put my boots on, grabbed my rifle, and stormed across the street. I went to the open door, and it was locked. Now, these doors don't have any locks, for safety reasons, so they must have barricaded the door or tied it. I went around back and tried the other door. Locked. <laughs> Got it. Whoever was in there was a fucking dick for scaring the new guys, well, and waking me up. As I was walking back across the street, I heard a, Where are you going? But it definitely wasn't another Marine. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I stopped dead in my tracks. The voice was a kind of mix between a whisper and, well, it carried an, an icy, mocking tone with it. Yeah, fuck that shit. I'm going back indoors. I locked eyes with the guy who woke me up, and we both understood what the hell just went down. I told him to wake up the next guy in a few minutes and go back to sleep. I got back into my sleeping bag and drifted off to sleep as I tried to burn all of the details into my memory. Well, for you guys, of course. I didn't get woken up again until the sun rose. The wind seemed even fiercer, and it was still ungodly cold. But we were indoors, luckily and the sun was rising. Not bad. Pretty soon, we got word that we all had to move our packs and go about a hundred meters from the town. A few guys complained and griped, but we did as we were told. I was equally curious as to why we had to move our packs outdoors. The scuttlebutt was that a few guys, including the commanding officer, had some weird experiences in one of the buildings during the night. All of them refused to sleep in the same building ever again. I drifted around while everyone was shaving and eating breakfast to see if I could shed some more light on this sudden exodus from the town. I found one of the guys that had been in the building pretty quickly and asked him what he'd seen. Basically, the night started out with all the guys huddled around listening to my stories on YouTube so they could scare the newer guys. Then, a few hours later, a few of them started having crazy nightmares about being in the town, and some creature with cat-like eyes tearing them apart. Except, they were the kind of dreams that never ended. You woke up from one, and you're in another. They said they never knew if they were in the real world or not. 
The guy on watch tried waking them up, but they just continued to breathe heavily, to sob, whimper, and fidget. And when they woke up, they were terrified, and the message was clear. Get the fuck out. I didn't really know what to make of it all, but I told them to quit listening to my damn stories. Well, not here at least. I'm assuming that this thing was in the building across from mine, but laid a mess with the other building for God knows what reason. We continued on with our day, and it was packed to the brim with training. During one of our few breaks, I decided to venture to the building that they were all staying in the night before. I had a few guys come with me, just in case, and it was pretty basic. A few chairs, a desk, and a filing cabinet. I saw that there was a rug on the ground, and kicked it on a pure whim. <laughs> I laughed when I saw the trap door. I opened it and looked down, but didn't see anything unusual. I decided just to take a few pictures and move on. There was a weird painting on the wall. Well, it may be a falafel menu or some weird voodoo shit. Any ideas are welcome. The rest of the day was pretty uneventful. We continued on into the night with our classes and training. It was all mostly a blur. I'd gotten back into my sleeping bag and uploaded the picture of the trapdoor on Twitter, and then went to sleep. Around 3am, I was woken up for watch, and put on just about every warming layer I own because of the wind. It was a pretty dark night due to all of the clouds hiding the moon, but I could still see the outline of various bushes and shrubs on the skyline. I walked around a bit to keep warm. I turned my back towards the empty desert, away from the wind, and thought of how nice it would be to get back into my sleeping bag. After about 15 minutes, I turned around out of habit and saw a large, dark figure on the horizon, maybe 100 meters away. Just as soon as I saw it, it vanished. I made a mental note of the location so I could check it out the next day. I woke up the next guy and got a few more hours of sleep before the sun came back up. Unfortunately, I didn't get time to wander off into the desert until around lunch. I grabbed a buddy of mine and we walked to where I was standing when I'd seen the thing. From there, we walked our hundred meters and we were just about to head back when he spotted some wood sticking out a little further away. We kicked a good portion of the sand away and realized it was another trap door. What the hell was a trap door doing this far out from town? Our packs were 150 meters from the town, and the trap door was another 100 meters out. It just didn't make any sense to have a tunnel entrance 250 meters away. Well, I wasn't ballsy enough to open the thing, but I knew I had to get a picture. My friend, the Mortarman his half-honey badger, and decided to open it just as I was taking the picture. We didn't go down, but, well, he couldn't see the bottom, just an endless ladder. The rest of the day was uneventful, and I didn't have watch that night. Now, to be clear, we still trained in the houses during the day and early night, but we didn't sleep in them. I did hear from another close friend that he would get weird vibes from a few of the buildings when we were still in them during the night. The next day, we messed around with simulation rounds, which are basically 9mm bullets with a wax projectile filled with paint. I didn't get shot, unfortunately, but they're about 10 times worse than a paintball from past experiences. Instead of going to sleep that night, we'd gone back into the town to set up a patrol base where some guys would stand post, some would patrol, and some would rest. God, I swear marines have amnesia. The night started out uneventfully, just a few patrols. We didn't have any enemy, so it was purely just for practice. 
I slept for maybe an hour and a half, and then we stepped off onto another patrol around the town. It felt like a waste of my time, but at least we were out of the buildings. When we came back, we were approached by a bunch of mortar men who asked if we would help them find their mortar system. Now, if you don't know what a mortar is, it fires explosive shells out of a cannon into the air. It's not very heavy and can be effective at decent ranges. Apparently, the guys on the mortar system were all asleep with one guy on watch. He was dutifully standing in the wind, and then, well, he wasn't. He woke up inside of the house, and the entire mortar system had vanished. He doesn't remember anything, and swears he didn't just go to sleep to get away from the wind. This was one of my friends who went and checked out the trap door with me, so I trust what he says. Keep in mind, we didn't have any enemy that night, and no one would fuck around and steal shit. These things are extremely expensive, and no one would dare mess around like this. But people still doubt him. The entire company was woken up at 4am, and we searched everywhere inside of the town in vain. Then we expanded outwards. After about 30 minutes of checking the same areas multiple times, I had an idea. I went over to my mortarman friend and told him we should go check the trap door in the desert that he had opened. We grabbed a few other mortarmen and told some people where we were going. When we got there, the trap door was open, despite of how bad the wind was. I sure as hell wasn't going to go down there, but the mortarmen were angry and decided to go down just to make sure. I didn't really like that idea at all. Three guys went down, and it sounded like it was about ten feet. It was pitch black, and the flashlights didn't really seem to do much. They were talking amongst themselves for a few seconds as they walked further into the tunnel, and then they were out of earshot. Thirty seconds passed, then I started to get worried. I told myself to wait another 30 seconds before I did anything. Just as I was counting down, I heard what sounded like a little girl laugh, and then the sound of running footsteps. Pretty soon I heard the guys climbing up the ladder. I heard the same laugh again, but this time closer. The first two guys had various components of the mortar system, and the last guy had the actual mortar tube, or whatever it was now. It looked like someone had bent it over their knee. I slammed the door and practically sprinted back to the town. Once we got there, we communicated that we'd gotten the damn mortar system back. The guys that went down had some explaining to do to the officers, but I'm sure they understood. I went back to sleep for a few more hours until the sun came up, and we were woken up for our safety brief. Our last and final day there. We were going to be using blank rounds, smoke grenades and flares. That was a busy day. As soon as the sun went down, we all went to sleep. No more training at night in that town. We all got that message. I didn't have watch again but I did hear that a few guys heard this strange laugh during the night. One of the guys even supposedly got a recording of the laugh on his phone. Well, it's been a while since I've been able to update. Let me start off by saying, I've spent a lot of time in the field without creepy things happening, <laughs> so I don't think a marine's life is filled with creepiness. Just recently, I was out there for a few weeks, and nothing remotely spooky happened. Anyway, we last left off in the middle of February with update number four. It's April now. Spring. The desert is slowly transitioning from a cold and windy purgatory to a scorching sandbox. Luckily for us, we hit the jackpot of deployments and headed off to Australia to do some training for six months, instead of baking in the desert. Now, I know what you're thinking. Australia sounds great. 
I thought that too, until we'd landed in a place called Darwin and stepped off the plane. Instantly, it felt like we were inside of a sauna. It was extremely humid, and we were sweating through our thick uniforms within our first few steps onto the tarmac. Ooh, it was hell. Flies and mosquitoes everywhere. They would crawl into your mouth and up your nose if you let them. It seemed like they weren't the only ones with a death wish in this tropical prison. For the first month, we did our little dog and pony show to impress the Australian army. We worked out twice a day and told them all how cool we were. The food they fed us was always some kind of stew made from yesterday's leftovers. Yep, that got old real quick. Being Americans, we quickly found the nearest fast food restaurant and supplier of two liters so we could stock up on calories before the field. We really didn't know what to expect before our first field up. All we knew was that we would head into the thick brush hundreds of kilometers from civilization and expect to be killed by 20 different animals by the first night, <laughs> if we were lucky. That's not an exaggeration by any means. There's this plant called the Jimpy Jimpy, aka the suicide plant, because the pain from its sting is so intense and long-lasting that most people and animals just kill themselves. Also, there's a virus in the dirt known as the Vietnam Time Bomb. Stuff will kill you from the inside out. Our first few days out there and we're pretty exhausted. We did a ton of patrolling at night, or as I like to call it, walking blindly into spider webs. We would try to sleep during the day, but if you slept for more than an hour, you'd wake up dazed and dehydrated from the beating sun. I think it was around day 12, towards the end of a field op, when things started to get interesting. We were completely fucking lost, as usual and wandering around in one long file during the night. There was no moon, and all you could hear were various birds and animals repeat the same noises over and over. It was all a blur until the guy in front of me stopped and picked something up. I didn't really pay any mind to it until we halted for a break, and he turned around to me. Hey, check this out. I found a doll. What? A fucking doll. He held it up and, sure enough, it was a doll. Its body was completely carved out of wood and it had some fake red hair glued on. Its eyes were just burn marks and it had a creepy little smirk scratched across its face. Weird. Now, keep in mind, we are literally in the middle of nowhere. Most of these lands were completely unexplored. As I'm sipping water and trying to wreck my brain for answers as to why the fuck there's a random doll in the middle of nowhere... We start moving again. I completely forgot about the creepy little doll for the next few hours, while we mindlessly walked around and tried to find our objective. It was all a blur, and I fell asleep a few times while walking, so I don't really remember much. Eventually, we found our way, and arrived at the objective. A small clearing in the middle of nowhere. It was the early morning now. We were supposed to sit there all day and wait for more orders. We were all pretty darn tired at this point, so I sat down and stared off into the distance, and drifted off to sleep. Suddenly, I hear a few grunts to my left, and sure enough, the machine gunners are playing with the doll they found. They're a simple-minded breed and easy to maintain, but they always find a way to screw everyone else over. I remember the distinct thought of, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. I fell back asleep and we spent the day napping and planning for our next objective. Finally, the sun set, and we headed off into the distance to our new objective. I remember being kind of excited that we only had one more thing to do, and then we would be back to base. As the night went on, our long file of marines began to get more and more spread out. The brush became thicker. Absolutely zero ambient light. I was struggling to keep up with the guy ahead of me, People kept getting lost, and we were constantly stopping to find them. We were just trying to get out of the jungle by this point. I was already creeped out by the extreme darkness. But when our compasses, radios, and GPS equipment started going crazy, I began to lose some composure. No matter how much we spun our compasses or reset our GPSs, they would always slowly turn us back the way we came. 
Our radios turned on, but all we could hear was just some kind of white noise. Nothing. I knew right away it had something to do with a doll. Maybe it was some weird voodoo aboriginal witchcraft doll. Who knows? But bad vibes indeed. I told the guy who picked her up to gently set her down somewhere nice and then keep walking. Nothing. Everywhere still went haywire. Our leaders decided to take a break and see if they could figure out how to navigate using the stars. Being in the southern hemisphere, the constellations and such are a lot different. Now, while I'm trying to do my best to keep a cool and level head, I hear the guy in front of me started frantically screaming, pure fucking terror. A few guys walk up to him and calm him down, and he spits out a stream of expletive followed by, doll, shit. The doll somehow made its way back into his backpack. We were too spread out for this to be a practical joke. This was just too impossible. We both walked past it when we set it down. Now, no one's laughing. He grabs the doll and puts it down. Then he starts talking to it and apologizing like it was a real human person. I remember making a mental note of how absurd this all was. By now, our fearless leaders seem to have figured out where to go, so we start moving. I didn't want to stop because I knew the doll was probably still with us. But we're talking about lieutenants. We're bound to get lost. Eventually, we stop, and all of us are holding our breath while the guy checks his pack. Nothing. We sit down and relax. The air gets a little lighter and easier to breathe. There's a bunch of commotion coming from a few guys back though. One of the lieutenants found the doll in their bag. He's completely lost his mind at this point. Laughing and crying at the same time. Day 12 of the field op and all the heat and bugs and creepy crap just about broke his mind. We put the doll against some log a few meters away from us. And everyone pauses to assess the situation. We are lost in the middle of nowhere. We have no idea where we are going, and we don't have much water. How oh, awesome. I can imagine the smirk on the doll's face, while we all collectively start to lose our minds. At least the sun is starting to come up. The next thirty minutes, we try to confirm our last known location, and get a general idea of where we are. But the doll isn't done with us just yet. Suddenly, we start to smell smoke. Off in the distant tree line, we see a blazing fire and we pick up. Someone grabs the ineffective lieutenant, and we head away from the fire into the opposite direction. Sure enough, it's coming from that way too. We keep trying to find a way out, until we realize we're walking in circles. Fire is everywhere. In the face of imminent death, sit down and take cool pictures <laughs> and hope someone finds them in the afterlife. I was never really a believer in any kind of higher being, and I'm still not. I guess we just got extremely lucky. We heard a helicopter fly overhead, and I'm assuming they realized we were lost after we hadn't checked in for a super long time. The pilot made an amazing landing between some trees and began ferrying us out to a clearing a few hundred feet away. We made a conscious effort to leave that damn doll behind in the flames. However, my troubles were not all behind me. Guess what we found when we got back? I hope you enjoyed that one. Pretty creepy, wasn't it? Well, that'll be it until next week. I'm sure there are more stories in this series coming along. Um, if you're interested, please check out the links to No Sleep, because the author has um, included lots of pictures and links to give a bit more evidence to what he's saying. So, please go and check those out. 
Oh, and join me again on Friday when I will return with Dead Man Running Part 4. Yes, finally, it is here. It's on its way, I promise. <laughs> okay, until then, you have sweet dreams, and I'll see you again real soon. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay? <laughs>